what are our problems with domestic hot water? Where should we slow down and recognize that that little two GPM pump at five or six feet ahead is going to get me in trouble? Where? Watch out. Watch out for water heater temperature control. Nothing beats a little storage. So anywhere you don't have any kind of storage, instantaneous water heaters of any type, be aware you may have supply temperature control issues if you don't over research them, if you don't change your research ideas or have a little bit of storage. Either one works. You know, 8.33 pounds of water in a gallon, so 8.33 BTUs is going to raise a gallon of water one degree, no matter what you do. And that's the issue. That's why a little bit of storage helps or a little extra research helps. So basically, some publication, heating, piping, piping and application, uh, air conditioning in 1985 by Gil Carson points this out. And in red is what I want you to read. And the punchline is this. We should increase a domestic hot water research pumps to 25% of peak load on these pumps to make sure we keep temperature control. Otherwise, when you cut on and off, your supply temperatures are going to change rapidly. You're going to have a hard time maintaining supply temperature control. So here, here's uh, some comments on dead end services with steam valves that we're just going to put here for you in case you have steam applications, but we find mostly probably gas-fired and electric instantaneous water heaters probably primarily gas-fired, but the same things happen with steam as well. So here's a typical example of a steam-fired instantaneous water heater. could be gas-fired, does not matter, and why you need to research more water. So we are saying to you to take the peak load of the water heater and research upsize your pump to 25%. So if this particular instantaneous water heater was 100 GPM, we're going to tell you to size your research pump on 25 GPM. Yet if you went back to the old way, it would only be two. So you see right now we're asking you to take a different look at instantaneous water heaters and make sure you up the research flow rate to 25% of the peak load to maintain temperature control. The main thing you need to understand Top picture, that's a, that little green valve is a big old steam control valve. It's sized for 100 GPM, 40 to 140 through that water heater. And it's sensing temperature. It's sensing temperature, supply temperature to the building. It's not sensing GPM. It's not sensing load. It's only sensing temperature. So if you had one shower, this is a 100 GPM water heater, if you had one shower pulling in, one and a half GPM on the shower head, maybe, and nobody else in the building, you got one and one half GPM of the cold water coming in the black line, going through the black line, going to the supply, and you got a steam control valve that's maybe four inches, been sized for 100 GPM of cold water, and there's only one and a half GPM there, and that water's cold. What's that steam control valve going to do? It's still sensing temperature, right? And it says it's cold. It's going to open wide open with one and one half GPM of cold water's only load. So your load is what? One and one half percent. Your load is one and one half percent. And you're going to dump 100% capacity on it. So what do you think is going to happen in any instantaneous water heater if you actually have a load of one and one half and that steam control valve is only sensing temperature and it's deaf, dumb, and blind, is the best way I do to describe it. It's going to open wide open. It's going to overshoot. So now you're going to have a supply water temperature running up to 180, 170 degrees going on that piece of pipe. So that's not desirable from a scholar and somebody having issues. And the only way to fix that is either storage or up in the flow rate of the return recirc pump. So b and is recommending on all instantaneous water heater a minimum recirculation of 25%. Now if we up to the 25%, think what happens. Now that little inch and a half excuse me, one and one and half cold water supply coming in there is going to be mixing with a research pump bringing back warm water at 25 GPM. Go to your sensing point. Go to where your sensor is to this big old control valve. It's now sensing a mixture of 25 GPM of hot water, one and one half GPM of cold water, so it's blended. So now it sees, it sees the actual temperature, and you could actually look at load a little bit better because now you've got a minimum flow rate of 25 GPM, not one and one half. And that's the whole issue. 
So how do you fix some of those things? Well, at the bottom, you see one idea. You go have to have a bigger research line for 25 GPM. So maybe you don't want to run a two-inch piece of pipe all over your building. One thing you could do is go inside your equipment room, put a little bypass, and where you bypass the old put a circuit setter and set that research flow rate for 25 GPM, 25 percent to the research pump. But now your big pipe is only in the equipment room. Also makes a great place to put a little hundred gallon storage tank. I'm a big believer in a little bit of storage. I really am. I mean, you can't change that number I gave you. This specific heat award is one. One BTU, one degree per pound on rise. So if I can have a little bit of storage, if I can increase that flow rate through maintenance water heaters so I have a better sense of where the real load is, I'm going to get a much smoother supply water temperature control, much better control of supply water temperature. And that's why on maintenance water heaters, in summary, we recommend 25% research as a minimum. So we had the oversized return line at two inch in this application, or we did a little bypass in the equipment room with the circuit setter and made it two inch, and now we've got the research going through the 25%. We've got good control now. Great way to fix problems.